We love our dogs. They love us and we dream about them. And so they link us to realms of of wildness. And they're also the guides of our souls. They are the guides to the underworld in mythology. The first thing that's so important is that dogs have been part of the human experience for just an enormous amount of times. And there's a lot of interesting anthropologic, archaeologic interest mm-hmm. in what is it about humans and dogs? Yeah, they've kind of co-evolved. They've, they've co-evolved. And interestingly, one theory is that when human communities became large enough and sophisticated enough to create trash dumps, <laughs> truly, that a certain species of canine discovered that as a resource. And so they would follow uh, the humans and in a sense slowly become dependent on them. There's another really interesting piece of research that was done, I think, in Russia. They were taking wild foxes and they were breeding them. And what they would do is that they would prioritize foxes that were naturally less aggressive towards humans, and then they would rebreed the less aggressive um, foxes. And the more they rebred them, the more they started to look like dogs, modern dogs. So it's this, there's something really interesting about this relationship between this wild creature and humans. Right. And here is a link, you know, in dogs, maybe to some extent cats, but our link with the instinctual realm of the animal with its uh, acute smell, hearing, and more, uh, and domesticity. And I'm just thinking about the, the dogs that we had as as pets and absolutely fully fledged members of the family oh, yeah. and m- how many people millions upon millions we love our dogs they love us and we dream about them mm-hmm. yeah i mean the 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 relationship between a person mm. and their dog can be so profound and so soulful and don't worry, we'll probably also do cat dreams too. So <laughs> hang on, cat lovers. But but dogs, they protect us. They work for us. They love us. And uh, it's an incredibly soulful experience to have that kind of relationship with a dog. And, you know, I don't know about you, but it's, it is so common that dog dreams come into my practice. People a lot of times dream about their own dog or maybe a dog from childhood. Yes. But sometimes dogs appear in in a more mythological fashion as well. And I think, you know, as you were saying, Deb, dogs have such acute senses that they're a really wonderful um, symbol for, for an ability to sniff out things in the unconscious. And they bridge the realms, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the world of instinct, uh, unconscious uh, powers that we don't possess as humans, uh, and they're our companions and live in our homes. And so they link us to realms of, of wildness in um, a really friendly kind of way. And, uh, and they're also... Uh, the guides of our souls. Mm-hmm. They, they are the guides to the underworld in mythology. Uh, the psychopomps who bridge the realms from the underworld to above ground, uh, from life to death, from consciousness to unconscious, uh, and provide that kind of really important uh, linking function. And as we look at the dog from a mythic and historical standpoint, the sentimental attitude towards dogs is fairly modern. Hmm. That dogs have, actually dogs chose humans. Humans didn't chose, choose dogs. Mm-hmm. Dogs mm-hmm. discovered, for instance, human refuse, and they right. just kept following along. And in the ancient world, dogs were not, for the most part, lap dogs. That they were part of the working environment, that they were allies, um, that they were not held with the same kind of um, 
child parent dynamic to which we have in the modern world and love so much, by the way, the dog to become our babies. I have to say that that's new. And in part, that has to do with kind of socioeconomic resources. You know, one or two generations ago, it's 1930, 1920, you had enough food for your family that you weren't getting special food for your dog. Your dog kind of lived outside and loved you, protected you, but was much more in the realm of that wild um, aspect. We've domesticated them beautifully so, and I've loved my dogs. But when we start thinking about how they show up in dreams and how show up in mythology, I think we need to understand how much more in the wild that the energy of the dog really is one foot there and one foot with us or yeah. one paw, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Before we move on to uh, sort of a mythological discussion and then we'll get to the dreams. I just actually want to share a dog story from sort of personal mythology, which is a story that my dad has told me from his childhood. So my dad grew up in North Georgia, which is rattlesnake country. And uh, they had a dog. I can't remember the dog's name, but my dad still remembers it. And that dog was my, my dad's companion as he traipsed all over the farm. It was, you know, acres and acres. So he's walking through the woods one day and the dog is behind him. And then the dog, for whatever reason, gets up in front of him. And a few feet later, a rattlesnake jumps out and bites the dog. And so it would, have oh my been, gosh. it would have been my dad who would have been bitten if it hadn't been for the dog. Now, the dog, if I recall <laughs> the story, the dog was okay. They were, they were able to uh, treat it, and, and the dog was okay, if I remember. So it's a happy ending. But just this remarkable thing, my dad has always felt like the dog had a sense and did it to save him. So it's, a, it's, a, it's just a great story. Oh, it's a wonderful story. And... Uh, ironically enough, it takes me to the flip side that we haven't talked about yet of dogs in their more ferocious attacking guise of your dad's dog attacked uh, or was going to attack the snake. Dogs have been used in warfare, um, guard dogs. Uh, we've all seen photos of you know, German shepherds and other big dogs. German shepherds scare me. Well, and so there it is of uh, the dog that can be harnessed for protective and, if necessary, lethal uh, wounding of a, a presumed enemy. Sure. And dogs every year, they, they maul and kill a certain number of people. I don't have statistics on that, mm -hmm. but that is not unheard of. Mm -hmm. You know, wa walking in a neighborhood, for example, where people don't fence or chain their dogs and the dog comes leaping out at you, it's very, it's very unnerving. It, it, you know, you feel really threatened when a dog does that. There was a famous movie in 1988 called um, Cry in the Dark that stars uh, Meryl Streep, which was taken from a terrible, tragic, trial in Australia where a couple was camping, they turned around and a wild dingo oh, right. had taken their baby. And uh, because the mother was traumatized and kind of stony, she was prosecuted because she couldn't convince people that actually an animal had run off with the, with the child. Oh, God. So, yes, dogs are amazing in so many areas of the instinctive, the wild, the companion, the loved one, the boy's best friend, the incredible range of feelings and qualities, I think most importantly, that dogs can embody and do embody. And uh, dogs were used in the Deep South to hunt slaves that had run mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. And so there is kind of enormous cultural trauma um, in the South about setting the dogs upon someone that is still a terrifying yeah. remnant for some people. 
And still today with um, something like escaped prisoners or uh, we set the dogs out. Uh, and there is something very terrifying about that. Uh, as I imagine, there must be for the fox and the traditional fox hunt mm -hmm. thing where the hounds are baying and pursuing uh, in a way that is um, almost Dionysian in, in the ecstasy uh, that the dog experiences. And the people experience right alongside, I'm sure. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So they can link yeah, The fever us. of the hunt. Right, exactly. And they can inspire that in us. And, and that brings up what happened to Acteon, right? When he spied ah. uh, Artemis bathing and she did not like that. And she turned him into a stag and his own dogs uh, ripped him limb to limb. Mm. And there you are in the ancient world where dogs were not um, lap dogs, right. that they were powerful allies. To humans, but they were in their own right fierce and dangerous and skilled, and they were hunters and protectors. Yeah. yeah. So, what do we make of uh, what dogs have become in a more modern era? With I don't know how many different breeds that are shown in dog shows, and the number of times that we have all in any town that I uh, go into now, it seems people are wheeling their dogs around in <laughs> strollers. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the, the beautiful plasticity of the archetype of the dog is um, how malleable the, the idea of the dog can be. You know, if it's, it's 1940 and you're, you're on a farm, a dog is malleable enough to leave out in the field. And if you raise them with sheep, it'll think it's a sheep and it'll extend all its protective ferocity and drive wolves away. In the modern era, where we're not living on farms, most of us aren't, but we still have a need, the need to feel loved by and to love and care for something that will return our affection with enormous enthusiasm and companionship. We need a companion. Dogs are malleable, and we can shape them into being our loving babies and our ever-enthusiastic, innocent toddlers that live in our homes. So the remarkable story is dogs seem to become what we need in a given time and space. I think that is really interesting and really important that dogs take on our projections for what we, what we need. And they change mm -hmm. in response to that. As we treat our dogs or we breed them a couple of different ways to make them into sweet little babies. Right. and we have. You know, these little Tibetan dogs that they would hide in the <laughs> sleeves of their robes that would just live with them, to these little Tibetan lap dogs. Mm -hmm. um, so they become, they become what we want and what we need over and over and over again, which is, when I say it that way, it sounds a little <laughs> intense, right? You know? <laughs> and they're still animal and other. They are, and, and they so are there is that. that sense of being, uh, of being allied in a having a deep connection with with uh, with an instinctual being, even if it's a little lapdog. <laughs> 